What's up everybody, how's it going? I'm Brad from Songfinch. Hope you're having a great day. Welcome to the channel. In our modern era of music making, studio tools are constantly improving, always developing new ways of increasing quality and realism, which has a direct impact on everything we record and mix. Everything these days is constantly getting brighter, more detailed, and more energetic as it comes to our ears. Thanks to improvements in virtually every part of the signal chain of recording technology. But sometimes that can get really overwhelming, especially if we want our music to have more of a classic character, more crunch, or both. So in this video, we're going to talk about some ways that you can warm up your tracks and subdue some of that extra gloss and brittleness that can just make songs feel a little too hyped. But before we get started, if you can do us a huge favor and hit the like button, that brings this video to more people just like yourself. It really helps us and we thank you a ton for doing it. So without further ado, let's go. So let's start at the top. What does warm mean? It falls in line with other producery words like punchy or transparent, which are best defined as descriptions of what sound feels like when it reaches your body. When something warm makes it to your ears, it usually means that it's not very bright it's a little fuzzy, a little saturated, maybe a little compressed, or all of the above. The main tools that contribute to an increase in warmth are equalizers, compressors, processors that saturate and distort, volume and amplitude changes, as well as any sort of analog-based simulation or emulation that create or recreate the effects of real-world equipment. So now that we know what we're dealing with, why would we warm something up? Why would we want to decrease the brightness or the fidelity of the tracks that we're making? To start, you might just like how warmed up tracks sound. And furthermore, you probably already have an idea of how much or how little warmth you can really tolerate in your music. But beyond your own creative vision, there's two main reasons why you'd want to warm up your tracks. It's usually that everything is just too bright or because you want it to feel less like it's coming off of a computer. We'll start with things being too bright because this is a pretty normal occurrence these days. Oftentimes we're chasing finished products that are already mastered and finished and have a ton of the extra gloss and glisten and sparkle that makes songs sound a little brighter and a little more hyped even though they may not have been recorded and produced that way. And so by the time we get to the end of our mix, after doing all of that extra polishing to each and every track, there sometimes can be too much and we need to tame it down and get rid of some of that. So if we get to that point and our mix and our recording is just sounding too bright, this is a great time to deploy warmth creating tools. And the other reason is that sometimes when we make music on computers, it can be really obvious that we made our music on a computer causing us to miss some of that realism. Now, the most natural way to fix this would be to run audio from your interface out into the real world, into real gear, and then bring it back into your computer and mix it in there. However, many of us are stuck in the box and don't really have access to real world processors and mixers and things like that to bring it to life. And so turning to warmth creation tools like analog simulators especially, really help bring some of that warmth to your track and again, more of that realism back into the fold, which can help us solve for keeping our our tracks from sounding too much like they came out of a computer. Now that we're up to speed, I'm going to give you four of my favorite tricks that I use to warm up tracks. The first is to roll off some high end. Really simple. Drop an equalizer on your track and just roll off some of that high end. From about 10k down, you'll really start to hear things get warm and get softened. So any range between 15k and 10k, you'll start to hear this change happen. And the further you go down below that, you'll hear it get more and more warm and less of the high end really having an effect on the overall sound in the track itself. Rolling off the high end also displaces harmonics in different areas, mostly down to the low end which can create more of that rumble and that girth and, and a little bit of that elegant messiness that makes tracks really sound warm and believable. After rolling off some high end, adding distortion or saturation to a track is a great way to warm it up. The extra harmonics flooding the signal and the subtle squeeze that happens as a result of the compression created by distortion overdrive all contribute to a much warmer sounding track without doing much more than just adding a little more grit. I would definitely recommend rolling off some high end before you add distortion, especially if you want tracks to sound warm. Because if you just add distortion to an already bright signal, well then you'll just have really bright fuzzy distortion. Beyond distortion is a great time to dig into an analog simulator. Analog simulators and emulators will get you more in that ballpark of warmth without having to labor over actually getting there in the first place. So if you have easy access to things like console emulations or tape emulations, you may even just want to start there to see if that solves issues of warmth that are in your track. But my favorite of all of these is to combine them all into one signal chain and use all of these tools to create the warmth that I'm looking for in my track. 
And so I highly encourage you, once you explore each of these, to go ahead and stack them all together and see what different combinations will create the kind of warmth that you want for your music. And so that's it, pretty simple. When you feel like some extra warmth would really bring your track to life or fix some of the issues you're not really stoked on, these tricks and warmth creating tools we talked about here will really help you get most of the way to where you're thinking. As always, there are no wrong answers when it comes to making music. So I encourage you to explore all these tools and discover the best ways for you to expand your creative process. If you found this video helpful, be sure to smash the like button and go ahead and share with other people who you think might get something from it. And in the meantime, head over to songfinch.com and check out the treasured moments that our artists are helping people from all over the world create for their lives. If you're a music creator, you want to get involved, visit our artist page and check out the link to apply. Otherwise, we'll see you on our social media at Songfinch. Thanks so much for watching. Look forward to seeing you again. Bye.